Sometimes everything that can go wrong will go wrong and Murphy's Law is playing its trick on you. Let me elaborate. Jack was having the most terrible week ever. He had a fight with his girlfriend and now he was cycling to his work. It was rainy, it was cold and he arrived late. After his boss confronted him with this, he lashed out to his boss and everything escalated too fast, too quick. And before Jack knew it, he was without a job, fired, and he was on his way back to home, again in the rain. And then Murphy struck again. Of course, his bike broke down and Jack needed to gather all of his strength to continue the last part of his commute without breaking totally down. When he was back home, he found a handwritten note. The literal drop which made the bucket overflow. It read, Dear Jack, it's over. Signed, Lily. As soon as Jack read this, he experienced severe pain on his chest, shortness of breath, and he was in total panic. He called 911, after which he received medical emergency help. Maybe you've heard such a story before, or maybe you have experienced it yourself, as Jack was suffering from the broken heart syndrome. In this video, we will cover what it is, what symptoms it can cause, how you can prevent and how you can treat it and much, much more. So make sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss any important information. And for those of you who are meeting for the first time, my name is Raoul. I'm a medical doctor from the Netherlands and it's my mission to medically educate you, my viewer, because educated people make healthier decisions. So let's get learning. <laughs> Before I will explain the broken heart syndrome to you, it's first important to recap the basic functioning of your heart. In essence, it's quite simple. Your heart is muscle and with every contraction, it pumps blood from your heart through the arteries to your muscles and to your organs and then back through the veins, back to your heart. To remain functioning, your heart needs oxygen and nutrients. Both are present in your blood, which is supplied to your heart through several blood vessels. These are called your coronary arteries which wrap around the entire heart. Which brings us to the broken heart syndrome, or in medical terms, a stress cardiomyopathy or a Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. Its exact cause is often unknown, but often it's provoked by an emotional stressor, like grief, fear, extreme anger or surprise, or a physical stressor, like a high fever, a stroke, a seizure, shortness of breath, severe bleeding, or a low blood sugar. These stressors might, within minutes to hours, increase certain hormone levels like adrenaline and noradrenaline. These hormones might bind directly to your heart cells, causing large amounts of calcium to enter your cells. This large intake of calcium can prevent your heart cells from beating properly. Furthermore, these high levels of certain hormones can also lead to contractions in your coronary arteries. This blocks the blood flow to your heart, which decreases its function and contributes to the broken heart syndrome. As the name suggests, its symptoms may mimic a heart attack. Patients might experience chest pain, shortness of breath, sweating and dizziness. Here it is important to mention that you should always contact your doctor or an emergency service if you do experience these symptoms, as they could also signal a real heart attack. In addition, the broken heart syndrome itself can rarely cause life-threatening complications as well. It may lead to pulmonary edema, a low blood sugar, an irregular heartbeat, a shock, heart failure, and the formation of blood clots, which might cause a heart attack or a stroke. The good news, however, is that these complications are very rare, and most people recover fully without permanent damage within several days to weeks. And if you want to spare me from a huge surge in my adrenaline, then please click the like and subscribe button. No, no, all jokes aside, these videos cost me a lot of time and effort to make and I hope you're learning a lot. If you do, then it would help out the channel tremendously if you click the like and subscribe button and so in return, you will never miss such an awesome video ever again. It's free, you can always change your mind. Let's continue. So now for the practical part of this video. There are some useful tips which can reduce your chances on ever developing a broken heart syndrome. And it all starts with lifestyle. It is important to be in the best shape you can be, physically and mentally. So stop smoking, limit your alcohol consumption, exercise at least 150 minutes each week, consume a balanced diet with low levels of saturated fats, salt and sugar, eat plenty of fibers, fruit and vegetables. Maintain a healthy weight, have a structured sleeping schedule, about seven to nine hours of sleep each night and decrease stress. Do so by maintaining social contact, doing fun activities, and relaxing. 
This is especially important for women, people aged over 50, and people with previous mental health disorders, as these groups are more prone to develop the broken heart syndrome. Some people will implement all of these lifestyle interventions, but will still develop a broken heart syndrome. And then medical treatment is necessary. Until the diagnosis is clear, the treatment at first is similar to the treatment of a heart attack. Most people will stay in the hospital while they recover. As mentioned, this will take days to weeks. Once the diagnosis is clear, and it's clear it's a broken heart syndrome, medication may be prescribed to reduce symptoms and prevent future attacks. Your doctor might recommend an ACE inhibitor, angiotensin II receptor blocker, beta blockers, diuretics, and blood tanning medication. I made specific in-depth videos on each of these drugs, and if you're curious, you can find a link to them in the description. Furthermore, I hope you know now what the broken heart syndrome is and what you can do about it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section and I will do my best to answer each and every one of them. For those of you that want to keep on learning, check out the playlist in the description with more awesome medical videos. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you learned a lot. If you did, please click the like and subscribe button and I will be posting a new video every week. I want to give special thanks to my Patreon supporters. Thank you, Sebastian, who is an university supporter. And for those of you that can't get enough, I'm also posting weekly posts on Instagram at How to Medicate. See me there or see me next week. Bye bye.